afternoon, everyone, and welcome to News 3 Live at 4 on this Wednesday, the day after the election. Everybody a little tired after <laughs> election night. Later this hour, we're going to sit down for a conversation with Madison Mayor-elect Satya Rhodes-Conway. And here's what else is making news today. Judge Lisa Neubauer is trailing Judge Brian Hagedorn by a slim margin in the race for the state Supreme Court. Rose Schmidt will join us with an update. And in two weeks, as we were just saying, Madison will have a new mayor. Satya Rhodes-Conway beat longtime Mayor Paul Soglin. And later this hour, we'll sit down and have an interview with her. And in national news, the most high-profile defendants charged in the massive college admission scandal are in federal court today. We'll get an update on that situation. Let's take a look outside today. Boy, didn't even need a coat, really. It was no, sunny, it a little started, warmer. It started cool, but the sun came out. It was nice. Quick, the daffodils are enjoying it. And the rain returns. April showers. Hopefully it'll bring some Mayflowers. I know it brings Dana up in the backyard weather patio <laughs> to talk about it. Yes. Look, no, no jacket no at all. No jacket. This is the first time in months. This is great outside. Now it is starting to get a little breezy, so uh, later on this evening I'm, I'm probably going to need a jacket actually. Uh, but we started the day off with sunshine, of course. Right now we have just a few clouds building on in, so as we look at our visible cloud check, uh, you can see those clouds, especially off to the west, as our next weather system starts to push right into Wisconsin. We have showers right now towards Iowa. They will be moving in our direction, so that's where the rain is currently. And and we will have the rain returning to us tonight. Not a great chance for heavy showers, but we do have the chance for some light showers for us late overnight and into your Thursday. But right now our Doppler track's pretty quiet. If you are going to step outside here anytime soon, know that it is just a little breezy. Our breeze coming from the west northwest about 10 miles per hour in Madison, and we are at 55 degrees right now. I can't say it's not too bad outside. 59 in Janesville and about 56 in Monroe currently. As we look at those wind speeds, though, uh, 10 miles per hour in Madison. And then we get up to about 14 towards Lone Rock. So throughout the area, anywhere from like 8 to 15, really kind of expected throughout the rest of this evening. Temperature wise, we will steadily drop overnight, falling into the 30s for us as we head into your Wednesday morning. But even around 6 o'clock, we're still in the low 50s and closer to 8, still in the upper 40s. So it won't be too bad with our temperatures. Uh, we'll get to what's ahead, of course, for the next few days. And as we look to the weekend in just a few minutes, right now on the roads, this is the Beltline right at Fish Hatchery Road. Both the east and westbound seem to be moving along. Uh, just is fine. We aren't seeing any major delays on the Beltline right now, and we don't have any major accidents either uh, throughout Dane County. We're picking up a lot of green, which is always good. Along 39 and 90, we don't have major delays. And again, even looking on the Isthmus right now, a few slower spots as more cars get on the road, but no major brake lights just yet. Around Janesville, things look just fine. And as far as your drive time, six minutes from Verona to the Beltline, seven minutes from Oregon to the Beltline, and four minutes from Springfield to University Avenue, so right where we usually see those times at. 27 minutes from Janesville to the Beltline, 17 from Sauk City to Middleton, and then from Sun Prairie to downtown. 16 minutes for us on this lovely evening. The April showers will be coming back in, uh, but we are in for a pretty nice Friday and Saturday. We'll talk about that a little more in just a few minutes. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Dana. Top of the news today, Liberal Judge Lisa Neubauer is not saying whether she'll concede to conservative Judge Brian Hagedorn, who now holds a narrow lead in the race for the state Supreme Court. The Associated Press did not declare a winner in this race, which had the second highest turnout in a nonpartisan race since 2000. Our Rose Schmidt explains what's next for the candidates. Rose? Yes, well, we're still waiting to hear whether this race will end in a recount, but we likely won't know the answer until the official election results are in next week. All the results we've seen so far have been preliminary. At a news conference this morning, conservatively backed Judge Brian Hagedorn says he doesn't believe it makes sense to have a recount, but says he is ready for one. He declared victory early this morning, and today he says he's humbled to win after being largely outspent by his opponent. Uh, we made history. Uh, we made history in a significant way, and our um, margin of victory looks to be insurmountable. Uh, been incredibly humbled by the support uh, that we've received all across the state of Wisconsin. Meanwhile, Judge Lisa Neubauer posted a video to Facebook thanking her supporters and saying the race is still too close to call. She did not concede the race to Hagedorn and is also not saying whether she would request a recount. She called for volunteers and donations to help her in her quest to make sure the election results are accurate. So now, the morning after the election, this race is still too close to call. We need to make sure that every last vote is counted, and that's going to take a little time. County clerks will be starting the canvas process of going through the results over the next few days. 
After the official results are in, the losing candidate has three business days to request a recount. If the current margin with Hagedorn's 6,000 votes ahead stays the same, Neubauer's campaign would have to pay for that recount because it's more than 0.25% of a difference between those two candidates. You'll remember Wisconsin had a recount in 2016, but that was for a presidential race with 3 million votes. And the last time a recount happened in a Supreme Court race was 2011, which was the highest turnout for a nonpartisan race. That race saw about 1.5 million votes compared to the election's 1.2 million in this current election. All right, Rose Schmidt, thank you. Thank you, Rose. There will be a change in leadership in Madison. Satya Rhodes Conway will be the next mayor of Madison. Rhodes Conway beat longtime Mayor Paul Soglin with 62% of the vote. She campaigned on issues of developing affordable housing, improving transportation with rapid transit, and climate change. She says she wants to hire the best and brightest to work with her to accomplish her goals. We have promises to keep and work to do, and I'm going to need help with that. Anyone and coming up later this hour, we'll share an interview with the mayor-elect. Rhodes Conway will officially become mayor in two weeks. And today, city and county leaders are weighing in on the change of leadership. Keely Arthur is here, and she has more details on that. Hi, Keely. Hi there. Well, current Mayor Paul Soglin and mayor-elect Rhodes Conway received a number of high-profile endorsements. One person we didn't hear from, though, Police Chief Mike Koval, until today. At a press conference, Rhodes Conway says she looks forward to sitting down with the chief. Speaking to News 3 Now this afternoon, Koval called Rhodes Conway ambitious and driven. He said he wants to provide her with the data to support his assertion that this growing city needs more officers. If we have an opportunity to share with her the data that we maintain as well as what she may have heard of, that down the road that that may at least have her take a second uh, look at what those staffing issues are, whether they're compelling or not, and then we'll live with those consequential choices that she makes. Today, Rhodes Conway re-emphasized her stance on the issue, saying she doesn't think the city needs more officers, but the city does need more mental health and addiction services so officers can focus on fighting violence. And we will hear from both of them and Dane County Executive Joe Parisi and his views on this new leadership tonight, this evening. It's going to be a big change. It will be a very big change, and you can feel kind of the, the energy and the anticipation over uh, downtown in, with all this. All right, we'll see you on later. Newscast. Thank you, Thank Keely. Thank you, Keely. New tonight at four after eight years, an Illinois boy last seen at a Wisconsin Dells resort has reportedly been found. Timothy Pitson was six years old when he was last seen at the resort in May of 2011. His mother was later found dead at a Rockford motel. Detectives from Aurora, Illinois, say a 14-year-old boy was wandering a neighborhood in the city of Newport today. He told police he had been kidnapped and told them that he was Pitson. The FBI is now leading the investigation. Former Vice President Joe Biden is speaking out for the first time about the allegations of inappropriate touching. Biden posted a video on Twitter today after four women came forward to say he touched them in a way that made them feel uncomfortable. Biden says his political style has always been to share a human connection. Biden says he has worked his entire career to empower women and says going forward he'll adjust his actions. Biden's team also released quotes from female friends and former colleagues who say he never crossed the line. The two biggest names in the college admission scandal appeared in a federal court today in Boston. Actress Lori Loughlin and Felicity Hoffman faces charges as more than a dozen parents appeared before the judge. Kenneth Craig reports from Boston. Actress Felicity Huffman arrived early at Boston Federal Court. To face charges, she paid a college admissions consultant $15,000 to boost her daughter's SAT scores. There are recorded phone calls, and there are emails, and there are wiretaps, and there are other types of communications that, that are documented and aren't going anywhere. So that's the kind of case that the federal government brings. Also facing the judge, actress Lori Lachlan and her fashion designer husband, Massimo Giannulli. Lachlan shook hands with fans outside the court. Lori, 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 pay for my tuition, Lori! The couple is accused of forking over half a million dollars to have their daughters falsely designated as recruits to the crew team at University of Southern California. 
A total of 15 defendants appeared before the judge here Wednesday, all of them parents, all of them accused of paying a college admissions consultant to get their kids into elite universities. Some defendants worked with a prison consultant when weighing their legal options. What's most surprising to me about the first conversation is how many of them didn't view their actions as, as criminal. The mastermind at the center of the scheme, Rick Singer, has already pleaded guilty and is cooperating with investigators. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Boston. And the parents face as much as 20 years in prison if convicted. Well, coming up next on Live at 4, we'll have this month's Tastemaker segment. A popular Monroe Street espresso bar is opening a second location. We'll see why the store is so popular when News 3 Live at 4 continues. You're watching News 3 Now, Live at 4. A former Netflix executive is suing the video streaming giant and reportedly claiming that she was fired after announcing her pregnancy. Netflix says the claims are unfounded. The news comes as a survey reveals more women are worried, worried about telling their employers that they're pregnant. A new survey shows that 21% of working women are nervous to tell their boss they're pregnant. That's a big jump from just five years ago. Mayor Beth Bearfield is with the Bright Horizons, which commissioned the study. That was startling to us. I think as we believe we are a workforce that is evolving and that is being more understanding of situations such as this, the study showed us differently. 
The study also revealed why more women may be nervous. 69% of people say working mothers are more likely to be passed up for a new job than other employees. Ironically, most people also believe mothers possess the skills needed to be a good business leader. Experts say it's important for women who are expecting to expect fair treatment from their company. Positive trade reports resulted in gains across the board on Wall Street. The Dow Industrials added 39 points, closing at 26,218. The Nasdaq Composite Index gained 46. The S&P 500 was up 6. Well, the Crescendo Espresso Bar and Music Cafe on Monroe Street serves up coffee, breakfast items, and music performances. Now the couple who owns Crescendo has opened a second location at Hilldale Mall. Madison Magazine's Andrea Bailing finds out why Crescendo is so successful in this month's Tastemaker segment. And we've got some goodies on the table here. Can you guys yeah. tell us what we have? Absolutely. So we do breakfast sandwiches that are really quick and easy to go. This is called a tree hugger. Tree hugger. Um, and it's pesto, tomatoes, cheddar cheese, egg, and then we throw a sausage, on the, a slice of Jones Farm sausage on there. Um, and then we have an assortment of baked goods. We actually get all of our bakery from Pasquals, which is kind oh. of an interesting, like... The, the Mexican restaurant, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. What are, what are these here? This is red velvet biscotti with a white chocolate. Can I try some? Uh, yes, please. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that sounds so... Oh, jeez. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> biscotti. <laughs> but we have a gingerbread scone with vanilla icing, and then this is a carrot ginger muffin. Ooh, yum. <clears throat> and what is this? This is peanut butter and granola toast. Oh my gosh. So it's a thick um, cut slice of, in this instance, Claussen's honey whole wheat. Oh, Claussen's. Yes. Um, organic peanut butter, maple syrup, and then granola. Yum. With cherries from Door County. I don't know if I've ever seen a, a slice that We really thick. don't want you to leave hungry. No. We really want to take care of you when you're here. So all of our toast comes on these thick cut slices. Nice. Bread. And we've got a couple of coffee items too. Right? Yeah. What's this one here? This is our nitro cold press. Try that. Yes. Nitro cold press. Um, this is Paul's baby a few years ago and it really took off. Mm. So we use anodyne coffee roasters for all of our coffee that we serve in house. Oh cool, and they're um, out of Milwaukee. They're right? out of Milwaukee. Yep. Um, and, but we have our own kind of recipe or whatever thing that we, voodoo that we do. Yes, yeah, it's, um, ma it's all magic. It's all, it's all magic. magic. <laughs> um, so this is our nitro cold press and it's one of our most popular items, especially in the summertime, but we serve it year round. And we do specialty Delicious. drinks with it and stuff. I love that foam on the top too. Yes, it feels like you're drinking a beer kind of. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then a latte. Just a really great solid latte. Beautiful too. Yes, yeah. Gorgeous. <laughs> yes, they're a talented crew back there. <laughs> Kate was telling me that you did some of the graphic design work for... I did all of it. You yeah. did all of it? Yeah, oh, wow. all of it. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's great. How did, um, you, how did you come up with the name, the logo? That was one of the things we decided on pretty early, early on, was the name. We only had a handful of names tossing around. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Crescendo was one of the names we landed on um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, probably lesser known reasons, but um, <laughs> now they'll be known. Um, <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> one of the reasons was uh, just the name Crescendo being a musical term, um, tying in really well with what we're doing. Um, the other one really just being kind of what happens inside your body as you drink coffee. Oh, um, yeah. Just kind of interesting. People don't really latch onto that one too well, but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's this natural kind of crescendoing that happens in your in your body um, throughout a cup. It's kind of interesting. That is cool. I yeah. like that yeah, double it's pretty, meeting. Pretty interesting. <clears throat> Thank you guys both so much for having yeah. us in here today. This, Absolutely. This place is beautiful and congrats. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. What Hilldale Mall? There you go. You pick up this month's Madison Magazine for more information on that and all the other adventures in Eats. Boy, you know I, how I love coffee. I was just, <laughs> you're, I was you're just drooling watching out here. that story. It, it, they're husband and wife, so it's very successful. Especially the coffee art. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible the how they do that. Yeah.
Give me a Folgers and a percolator. I'm <laughs> yeah, good to go. Yeah. All right, well, as the opioid crisis continues, many donated organs are being declined because they're infected with hepatitis C virus. How some doctors are figuring out a way to prevent the transmission of the virus from the infected donor. We'll have that story when we come back. Take a look at this. Ross Jennings is on a mission. He's hoping to be the first person ever to travel the world playing a bagpipe. He does workshops at international schools to help fund his travels. His goal is to play the bagpipe in every country in the world. He just landed in the United States this week, marking his 100th country. So he's well on his way. He was in cool. Times Square. That is an acquired taste. I like bagpipes. I do too. I think I they're fascinating, actually. Well, it's amazing how loud they are. So loud. I wanted one at my wedding um, that got vetoed. So. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I did want a bagpipe there for a long time. Why? Why? Did I want a bagpipe? I think they sound are, are you, are you cool. Scottish? I think it's no, actually, a little Irish. <laughs> so. That's well, not at all, but but I think they're really cool. I was going to say next time about this. Round two. Yeah, well, take that. You better like bagpipes. Don't tell them. Don't tell them. No. <laughs> all right, yes. some rain on the way. Rain on the way. Those April showers, of course, uh, a threat for us for at least tomorrow. But we're looking towards the weekend, and temperature-wise and sky conditions really look great for both Friday and Saturday. Nice. So great. We'll a little, little dry spell there. Of course, today so far hasn't been too bad, but the clouds are building in in front of that next rain chance. Uh, we'll take a look at your forecast right after the break.
Overall, uh, not too bad of a morning or early afternoon for us. Sunshine early today and a mostly clear sky, but now a few clouds building on in. And we will see those clouds continue to come in throughout the evening. And that's going to bring the rain chances for us overnight today. A high of 57 degrees, a little above average, but really pleasant outside, aside from the little breeze. But again, at least it wasn't too gusty for us. And we started the day off uh, close to our average in the upper 20s. Sunset is an Intel 726. So you have a little bit of time this evening to still enjoy the sunshine. Our Doppler track's pretty quiet, but as we saw earlier, uh, that cloud coverage right now just off to the west is going to build in first, and then comes the rain. Right now, we have high pressure really centered to the southeast that's sending us this westerly flow for the day. It's a north-northwest breeze for us right now. And then we have this area of low pressure in the plains. It's going to cross just south of us through the Midwest, uh, but drive a lot of moisture into the area. Most of the rain is going to stay south of Wisconsin, but we are going to pick up that chance, of course, for light showers tonight and into tomorrow morning. And we may see a few spots where the rain <coughs> mixes with a few snowflakes, especially west and north of Madison. So by midnight, we start to see some light showers right along the state line. We may see some drizzle spots up around Madison into your commute tomorrow. Uh, if you're towards Janesville, Beloit, or even Platteville, again, along that state line, we'll have the light showers. Madison may see a few light showers, and areas north and west may see just a few snowflakes early in the day. Shower chances into Thursday evening really start to die down for us. If you do have to travel south at all tomorrow, do you know they will be picking up just a little more rainfall. By Thursday night, we steadily dry up and then steadily clear up by Friday. Friday, our skies become partly sunny and then we have a really nice afternoon for Friday and for Saturday. We just have to get through a little rain chance, another little rain chance for us coming through again for tonight and for most of tomorrow. Tomorrow's not going to be a total soaker of a day, uh, but we may see again a few rain spots for us. Our breeze still coming from the west overnight. Plan on our temperatures dropping just a little bit. By midnight, we start to see those showers really move in. Uh, again, especially along the state line, most of it stays south for us by tomorrow morning. We are in the mid 30s. Our breeze shifting directions a little bit coming from the northeast and then heading into your Thursday afternoon. Temperatures will be in the upper 40s. So rather than being so far above average, we'll fall back just a little bit and be a little below average for your Thursday high temperatures. A mostly cloudy sky when it's not raining and then overnight we steadily see a little bit of clearing by Friday morning. We are planning on those skies becoming partly sunny and in the afternoon temperatures will get close to 60 for us. So it won't be too bad of an end to the work week. Our wind speeds also will calm down just a little bit uh, back to that westerly full flow for Friday and into Saturday. As far as accumulation totals, they'll really stay on the, the low side. Uh, you get into northern Illinois, they may see anywhere from a third of an inch up to a half of an inch possible. Notice Dubuque just under a half of an inch with this one model, but up towards Madison, not even picking up a 10 of an inch for us. So really light rainfall expected, but that gradient does go uh, south of Madison where we'll see higher accumulation totals along the state line. Plan on an overnight low of about 35 or breeze coming from the east northeast about 8 to 15 miles per hour. So enough that you'll notice it and it's not going to be too windy outside cloudy with some showers and it may mix a few snowflakes in again heading into tomorrow morning, areas west and north of Madison. A little windy and cooler tomorrow. That breeze, 15 to 25 miles per hour. Our showers uh, will start to wrap up later on in the day, but we may see that mix early on in the day. Temperatures tomorrow will be just a little below average, and then looking into the weekend, uh, we're expecting a little bit of a warm-up. Friday and Saturday will be quite pleasant outside. Partly sunny skies for both days. So that sun will be really nice. It'll feel good outside. Uh, Saturday should be good. And then looking ahead to Saturday night, we become mostly cloudy with our next chance for some showers building on in. Those showers and a few isolated thunderstorms possible on Sunday into early Monday morning. Next week, our temperatures fall back a little bit. We're not as far into the 60s, of course, we'll be closer to average for Tuesday and Wednesday and another chance for rain next week. So this pattern so far uh, we've been talking about for the last few weeks of two days of dry and another opportunity for rain uh, does look like it's going to continue for us into the first weekend of April.
Considering what we've been through? Yeah. It's not bad. This is fine. No, this it's is very fun. acceptable. Correct. Very yeah. manageable weather. Absolutely. All right, Dana, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Dana. Well, in the wake of the opioid crisis, more donated organs are infected with the hepatitis C virus, and many are declined as a result. Now, researchers at Brigham and Women's Hospital are using a new approach to prevent transplant patients from getting the virus from infected donor hearts and lungs. Dr. Malika Marshall introduces us to a heart transplant survivor. You'd never know that three years ago, Connor Sullivan was in organ failure. A virus attacked the Air Force veteran's heart, and he needed a heart transplant. Being on the transplant list, it's, it's a constant worry in your mind of when you're going to get the call, if you're going to get the call. About 1,000 patients die every year waiting for heart or lung transplants because there aren't enough organs available. Then doctors at Brigham and Women's Hospital told Connor about research they were doing involving organs infected with the hepatitis C virus decided that was a, a good idea it would it allow me to get a heart quicker. A new study shows researchers have been able to prevent transmission of the virus by treating heart and lung transplant patients with antiviral medications. We started treatment of these patients as soon as it was safe to do so uh, within a few hours after transplant. Dr. Ann Woolley says the study of 35 patients had a 100 percent success rate. They had cleared their virus, the majority of the patients, within a few days, all by around the two-week mark. And we saw no difference in outcomes in our hepatitis C group compared to our non-hepatitis C group. After 18 months of waiting, Connor finally got his new heart. The 25-year-old is now training to run the Boston Marathon. It means a lot to me. I, I think I have a lot of people to thank, and this will kind of be for them. Dr. Malika Marshall, CBS News, Boston. It's pretty amazing. That's incredible, that he's running really a marathon. Yeah, good for him. Huh? Well, many scientists and engineers say artificial intelligence is no laughing matter. But coming up next, how some computer scientists are trying to get robots to have a sense of humor. That's when we come back.
is a live look downtown on this. Uh, today is Th Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm getting my <laughs> days mixed up. Thank you very much. It's a lot of sky. Yeah, a little mix of clouds and sun. But it's going to get warmer from here. That's good news. Robots are tackling more and more tasks as artificial intelligence gets better and better. But this is no joke. Robots struggle to understand humor. Now some computer scientists are trying to inject a little humor into these machines. Hey, Scott. So you've been doing comedy around town? Or what's your deal? Comedian Curtis Matthews has been teaching stand-up comedy for two decades. A big part of his job is getting students out of their normal way of thinking. People are learning how to think funny as opposed to being logical. All those things that may have helped a person get into college and uh, succeed in business aren't necessarily helpful when it comes to comedy because we, we tend to laugh at the wrong answer or the weird answer. Turns out there's a similar challenge for computer scientists and linguists when it comes to programming robots. Okay, Siri, tell me a joke. Does anyone want to buy my old vacuum cleaner? It's just gathering dust. Siri may know how to tell a joke, but understanding humor is still a tall order, even as artificial intelligence gets better and computers take on more complicated tasks. Humor is very subtle. It requires a lot of understanding of like human social rules and context. Even when we travel to a different country, like being able to get into the, the mind of the culture we're in is, is pretty difficult. Have you heard the one about the young monk? Oregon State University's Heather Knight created the comedy performing robot Ginger to help her design machines that better interact with humans. I think that people are much better at figuring out what's funny than robots. So one of the things that I'm trying to do is um, get lots of different audiences in, um, in the same room for a show, like a sequence of shows, and actually see what people find is funny. Post this on Twitter. <laughs> While humor and AI is a growing field for academics, comedians like Matthews are not too worried about being out of work. Tell me a joke. Why did the scarecrow keep getting promoted? Because he was outstanding in his field. I'm not worried that a, a robot will take my job as a comedian because uh, my comedy is as personal as my thumbprint. You could get AI to repeat the jokes that I write and the, or the things that I feel, but you could never get AI to become me. You just can't. So, you know, because of the, my experience as a human being. An experience a robot will never have or appreciate. That must have been hilarious. So Siri tells dad jokes. <laughs> but it is a uniquely human right. thing, and that's humor. Like, that would be hard to program into a computer. An appreciation for humor. If they ever did, I mean, then things would really get scary. Yeah, then we're, we're, <laughs> then then we're, we're in done. trouble. We're yeah, done. Good night. <laughs> well, coming up, we have more coming up here on Live at Four. We'll get to know the Madison mayor-elect a little better. Hear our interview with Satya Rhodes Conway when Live at Four continues.
We made it through Wednesday. We're almost the full workday. Still got to make it home, of course. Roads aren't looking too bad right now. Uh, this is the Beltline right at Fish Hatchery Road. Uh, good news, we are seeing folks move in on both the east and westbound sides. No major delays or major brake lights and spots, of course, on the exit ramps. Occasionally, you get a few cars backed up a little bit, and then everybody scoots on through. So that's the trend, of course, when we get to this time of the day. Uh, we see a little slower spot, a few slower spots, uh, but overall, thankfully, we're not talking about any accidents right now. As we take a little closer look at the Beltline, uh, eastbound, as usual, seeing the most delays as you get closer to Park Street, down to about 37 miles per hour. Uh, closer to Gaiman Road, though, back up to 61. And a little bit of a delay as you get closer to Monona. Now, on the westbound side, again, that Park Street exit, heading westbound even, it's delayed just a little bit, down to about 28 miles per hour, but closer to Gammon Road, things pick back up and then closer you get to 51. Those speeds pick back up yet again for westbound. Uh, looking just west of Madison, of course, Middleton, seeing a few delays downtown, downtown 14 through Cross Plains and Black Earth. That all looks just fine and towards Mount Horeb. A few brake lights there, but no accidents. Just going a little slower than usual. Around Janesville, we don't see any major delays. And then for 39 and 90, if you're traveling all the way south through the state line, uh, you should be just fine. No major complaints either. Jefferson County also looking just fine uh, for your drive home this evening. Though you might need the shades as we don't have the clouds, of course, building in just yet. Northbound for Verona to the Beltline will take you just about six minutes. Seven minutes westbound from Oregon to the Beltline. And then Springfield to University Avenue at five minutes. So all a quick trip for you this evening. From Janesville to the Beltline, if you're traveling northbound, of course, 26 minutes, 17 minutes from Sauk City to Middleton, and then 18 minutes southbound from Sun Prairie to downtown. So overall, our drive times are actually looking okay this evening. Now, you shouldn't see any major delays. Just, of course, add a minute or two onto your trip if you're traveling eastbound on the Beltline. That's a quick look at traffic. Dana, thank you. Well, do you enjoy an exciting film with spectacular underwater scenes? Well, there's a good chance that the film will be made in Belgium in the future. The most advanced underwater film studio in the world just opened in the city of Vilvorde. The brand new water studio is the most specialized in the world. Until now, film recordings with large water effects were reserved for outdoor water studios, where it can be carried out faster, safer, less costly, and independent of weather conditions. With a touch of a button, you can create waves. The studio is about the same size as an Olympic swimming pool, but it's more than 33 feet deep. Very cool. That is spectacular. Yeah making underwater movies a lot easier. Well, as you mentioned, at the top of the hour, Madison voters have selected a new mayor. Satya Rose Conway bested longtime Madison Mayor Paul Soglin by 62% to 38% of the votes. The mayor-elect addressed the media in her first news conference over the noon hour, and we had the chance to sit down with Satya Rose Conway to talk about her victory and her plans for the city of Madison. How are you feeling? Did you get any sleep last night? I'm feeling good. I did not get a lot of sleep, um, and we started very early this morning. And well, at the news conference today, you introduced yourself and said, I'm Satya Rhodes Conway, and I am the next mayor of Madison. How did that feel? It's pretty exciting, honestly. Um, I'm a little overwhelming, but I am really excited to get to work. And like I said, we've already had a number of meetings this morning and a number more scheduled this afternoon, and, and we'll just be pushing through the two weeks that we get for transition. Did you think the vote margin would be that great? I had no idea. Um, I actually did not expect to, it to be called as soon as it was. I thought it would be much later at night. Yeah. You met with Mayor Soglin this morning. I did. And what did the two of you talk about? Um, we talked about a number of things. Um, he was very gracious, um, and he is just facilitating a very smooth transition. Um, we've already met with uh, HR and IT, and, and we're underway. We met with a number of different department and division heads, um, and Mayor and I went over um, a short list of things that he wanted to make sure that I knew about right away. What are your priorities going to be from day one on? Well, so the priority for the transition is to make sure that we get a great team in place. Another big focus is going to be making sure that we build the good, strong relationships that we're going to need to collaborate moving forward. So I've already reached out to the new city council, um, and we'll be setting up meetings with them. And I'll be talking with County Executive Preci, and hope to reach out to all the leadership of the surrounding municipalities. There's a lot to do there. There's a lot of relationships to make sure that we built, um, and we'll be focused on that. You've had a busy 12 hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and I should probably apologize to all the people who are blowing up my phone with text messages because I haven't gotten back to any of them yet. <laughs> so of your campaign promises, what 
can you put them in priority? What do you have something that you're really going to push forward right away? That mass you know, transit or we, climate? We we talked a lot about affordable housing and transit, and we talked about racial equity and climate change. And one of the nice things about those four priorities is that they are all interrelated. Um, so we are going to have to tackle them all together and um, stay tuned for more specifics on what we hope to do in the first 100 days. You moved here 20 years ago, was it? Almost now. Like, like so many of us yeah. came here and then finally felt like we were home and yeah. stayed. Um, and you, I'm sure you've seen a lot of changes happening in sure. Madison over the past 20 years. So what is your vision? for our community. You know, what we've been talking about and what still remains true in my heart is that Madison needs to be a place where everyone has the opportunity to thrive. Um, and there's a lot that goes into that, um, but our incredible quality of life has to be something that is available to everyone who lives here. Um, we'll be working on that. In your job with the university, you talk to mayors all over the country. What's, yeah. what's out there that you were exposed to that you'd maybe want to implement here? Oh boy, how long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole list of good ideas. You know, there's um, a, a sort of a handful of affordable housing solutions that we'll be looking at right away to see what's applicable here. Um, certainly, we've talked a lot about bus rapid transit. That's something that is working in places like Eugene, Oregon, and Grand Rapids, Michigan, and even Boston and Cleveland. And so, uh, you know, we'll be pulling, I think, the best ideas from across the country. And I'm really looking forward to talking with mayors um, in a different role now mm -hmm. um, and learning from them. One of the things that the mayor and I talked about this morning was the city's relationship with the National League of Cities and the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Um, so I'm hoping to get more information from him about how we can build on those. Best of luck to you. Mayor thank you thank so you. much. Congratulations. Looking forward to the next four years at least. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. One thing that's interesting is I, I had never met anyone named Satya before, so mm -hmm. I asked her about her first name, and I asked her if it was a family name, mm -hmm. and she said it's actually Sanskrit, and it is the Sanskrit word for truth. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, well, I don't know if it was a given name. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, think that, I thought yeah. that was interesting. Very interesting indeed. All right, we'll have a final check of your forecast coming up. Spot. Enjoy the evening. Yes, yes, it should be pretty nice outside for the next few hours as far as temperatures are concerned. Now, the clouds are building in for us. Notice an 
pretty overcast sky in Iowa. Uh, we will see the cloud coverage build in this evening and then the rain comes overnight. But right now we don't have any showers for us. 55 currently in Madison with a breeze coming from the west northwest. It's at 59 though in Janesville and 57 in Mineral Point. So a pretty spring like evening as we go through the next few hours. It will be just a little breezy outside though. Those wind speeds anywhere from 8 to 15 miles per hour for us this evening. Um, plan on a little bit of a breezy morning also. April showers. Yes, yes, All coming right on then. through. Thank Thanks, you. Dana. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow here on Live Before, we'll find out what's happening this weekend in the 608 with Emmy Fink. And we go behind the wheel with Harvey Briggs in the all-new 2019 Volkswagen Jetta. An orange one. Nice one. That's <laughs> coming up tomorrow on Live at 4. In today's final.